Hey, if you've been struggling to mask the brightest areas or the darkest areas in your image, then today's video is especially for you because we're gonna cover the luminosity mask. Now, this is a tool that it can seem a little daunting, but it's actually really, really easy to use inside of On One Photo Raw, and we're gonna walk through it. Now, if you wanna pick up On One Photo Raw and save a little bit of money, consider using the link down in the description box below because On One is on sale right now. And for that matter, their entire store, they're having sales and discounts. So go over to the On One website, check it out, and if you wanna pick something up, and you use the link down below, just know it is an affiliate link, which means I make a small commission, but that's at no extra charge to you. Now, let's jump into today's video to take a look at the luminosity mask. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and you can see I have an image that is relatively dark in the foreground and really bright in the background. This is a beautiful candidate for the luminosity mask. So let me just go ahead and close this left pane so we can get a little bit more real estate here. And the reason you want to use the luminosity mask is because it's gonna give you a natural look in your image. So if I want it to, by default, we'll come over to local, and we'll say that I wanna open the shadows in this area. One of the ways that you could do it is you could just take a brush, paint over, the shadowed areas right here and you know i'm just doing a really quick and crude job you could also use the super select ai tool if you so chose but i'll just pull up on the shadows and you know that that could work but it doesn't look as natural it doesn't look as consistent with the light that's going on around here and that's the reason why the luminosity mask really does come in handy because it allows you to select the tonal values in your image so we're going to go ahead and reset this mask so i'm going to right click on the mask icon or the layer icon here and then i'm just going to click reset mask that's going to give me a black mask and I'm also going to reset this exposure adjustment or I'm sorry shadows adjustment so that way I don't have anything on my image right now so to activate the luminosity mask there are many many ways but the way that I recommend everyone to activate the luminosity mask is to right click on this little layer icon or the effect icon that you want to apply the mask to. Now, if you have multiple effects, and we'll just go ahead and rename this real quick. And I've misspelled effect, but you get the point. Make sure that you have the layer selected. So if I had multiple layers in here, just like this, I have three of them. I wanna make sure that I click on the layer where I want to apply it. It's also going to get a different color than the other layers. So just be cognizant of that, all right? Because you don't want to apply the luminosity mask or any mask to the wrong effect and then maybe mess up something that you've already worked on. So what we're going to do is right click on the mask icon here. And what that does is it gives us this pop-up window and you'll notice about halfway down in this window, you get create luminosity mask. Now this is by far my favorite way because it ensures that I selected the right item that I want to apply this mask to uh, when I'm applying it. So now that the mask is applied to the image, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, the way that you can take a look at it is by pressing the letter O on the keyboard if your keyboard shortcuts are still mapped to the defaults. But if for whatever reason you changed it and you don't know your keyboard shortcut key, what you can do is come up to the masking options and or the masking properties, I should say. And this could be in different locations based off of how you have on one set up. But for me, I have it nested right here in the right column. When you hover over it, it should expand if it isn't already for you. And then down at the bottom far right of the masking properties, you'll see this little mask and it looks like a little masquerade ball mask. So if you click it, you can turn it off, turn it on. And we're looking at the grayscale version of the mask. 
I highly recommend that when you are working with the luminosity mask that you use the grayscale version and essentially it makes your photo look black and white and we're going to talk about that but let me show you how you can activate the grayscale version of your mask in the event that you have the red mask or the red overlay so if you come down to the bottom of on one photo raw you'll see this little masking icon the show hide mask icon you'll see that that's activated blue to the right of that there's a little drop down arrow when you click that drop down arrow you get three different options now if yours is set to the red overlay like so then you can see where that red overlay is but again, I think that the grayscale is the best masking option for the luminosity mask. So we're going to click on the drop down arrow again, and then we'll select grayscale down at the bottom. That is the easiest way to set your mask. So we're looking at the luminance values that are being selected in a much easier way to depict. Now that we have our mask situated, let's go ahead and go over some of the parameters that we can use to control the mask itself. Now, think of a luminosity mask as a smart stencil for your image. On one detects the brightest pixels in your image. So like the thing that is the most bright in your photo, all the way down to the thing that is the least bright or the darkest pixel in your image. And you can essentially use that information to apply adjustments in very specific locations. There are really just two uh, masking parameters that we need to cover, but we're gonna cover three because feather really does matter, but that'll be towards the end. The first one is levels. Now, levels, it essentially manages how aggressive that transition from the brightest pixel to the darkest pixel really is. So you have three little circles on the level slider. If I pull this over to the right, just watch what happens to the image. You can see that I am now making that transition from the darkest pixel, which is represented by this left circle or left dot control node. That's what we'll call it represented by this left control node. And if you look at this representation here from the darkest control node to the middle gray control node, there's a lot of information in here. So it's taking longer for that transition to happen. But as soon as it gets to the gray or the middle portion of the transition, then it goes really fast until it gets to the brightest transition point, all right, or the brightest node. And you can move these around. So if I pull the brightest areas in, what I'm doing is saying, don't apply the mask to these brighter areas, only apply it to this middle area between the bright or the middle gray, or what would be considered the transition point up to this point. In other words, you can think of these as start and stop markers for your transition. All right, I'm gonna double click levels. So if you ever get any adjustments that you're just not a fan of, you can double click on levels. And what that does is resets it so that way you can get back to the default setting. The next slider that we need to cover is window. And window is a little bit more intentional about including or excluding your dynamic range. So by default, it's including the darkest pixel all the way to the brightest pixel for consideration for this particular uh, mask. So watch as I move this node towards the right, what happens to the image? I'm going to pull this in and essentially I'm telling on one, I don't want the mask to apply to anything that is darker than the location of this node in my image, where this manages the transition. So if I need to smooth this out a little bit, then I can come over here and pull on the transition slider and we'll kind of fade. You know, I'm getting a harder line here because I have less dark pixels in the mask itself which is good in some cases, especially if you want to be very specific and precise. 
So this is how you can combine levels and the window slider together. Now I'm gonna double click the levels because as I pull this even further to the right, you can notice I'm only selecting the brightest pixels in the image, the absolute brightest pixels. This is really, really helpful when you're just trying to get the brightest areas in your photo and you want to apply a particular effect to that area. Now, you can also double click window to reset that range or you can just pull it all the way out. But where the window slider really comes in handy is when you want to select just a very specific range. So if I were to only want this little piece right in here, this arch, then I can set my window to the point where only the arch is being selected or primarily the arch, all right? So I'll fiddle around with this just a bit and this is looking pretty good right here. And then of course I can come up to my levels and I can adjust how that transition happens because essentially the brighter or the more white that you see, the more impact the effect is going to have to that area. Anything that's gray is going to get less of the effect. And then anything that's black is not going to get any of the effect that you're applying. Just remember the mask is setting up a smart stencil so you can apply your adjustment to just those areas. And anything that's white or gray is going to get the, and anything that's white or gray is what's going to actually receive the effect. If I want it to make this very impactful, what I need to do is pull up on the levels, but you can see I am including some of this foreground. So let's go ahead and really set this up for the way that I would like to do it. All right, now the last thing that I'll cover before we use this in a practical sense is when you activate the luminosity mask, by default, it is going to select the brightest areas. And if you want the opposite of that, meaning you want it to select the darkest areas, what you wanna do is right click on the mask icon and then click invert mask, just like any other mask. And what this does is it selects the darker areas. Just know that when you do this, everything that you use for the levels and the window slider is going to be backwards. So if I pull the window slider, assuming that I wanna remove this from the darkest areas, I'm actually including more of those uh, dark areas, if you will, or the brighter areas. So just know that it does work a little bit backwards than how it was already working. But here's the deal. Like I've always said in other videos, trial and error is the best way of working with the levels and the window slider. But if you're looking at it from a grayscale perspective, knowing that white is selecting your image and that's where the effect is going to be the most prominent, all you have to do is play around with these sliders to figure out how to get the overall look that you want so you can apply the effect the way that you would like to apply it. Now, let's go ahead and reset all of this and then use this in a more practical sense. So I'm just gonna come down here, right click, reset mask, and then right click, and we are going to create a luminosity mask. Now, I'm gonna turn this off for a second and take a look at my image. What I want to do is open up the shadowed areas right down here underneath the clock, all right? now. I don't really care to open up the shadow areas around the top. I really just want to open up the shadow areas underneath here. So we're gonna do it, we're gonna do two things. First one is we're going to modify the luminosity mask. So I'm gonna hit the letter O and I'm gonna make sure that I get a really good selection of this area down here. But I need to make sure that I keep it as natural looking as possible because if we turn off this mask, what I'm what I'm noticing here is this light is really bright and by default it's indoors. So there should be some shadows down here. So I don't wanna make this extremely bright. I just wanna bring out some of the detail that's down there, all right? So we'll hit the letter O and I see that I have a grayscale mask down here, mostly in black. I wanna make this more of a gray 
tone down here or a gray color in my mask, I should say. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull around on my level slider because that by itself is doing a really good job. I like that it's preserving the shadowed areas in these little statues, but it's also giving me a little bit more flexibility to apply the light adjustment that I want to apply. So I'm going to start with this. I'll hit the letter O to turn it off because now I want to see what effect I'm actually going to or what the effect is going to do on my image, I should say. So I'm going to come over to the shadow slider. I'm just going to pull this to the right and you can see how that's just very gently opening up the shadows down there in a more believable way than what I'm getting if I had just pulled up on the shadow slider by itself. So let me just go ahead and turn this effect off and turn it back on. And you can see how that's just helping bring out some of the detail down here. Now I can also increase the exposure. I can maybe even increase some of the midtones. And then if I feel like I'm losing some of the contrast in the image, I can just pull up on the contrast slider as well. So I maintain a balance in the image. And this is the beauty of using a luminosity mask. Now, this image has a lot of very straight geometrical shapes and lines and things of that sort, and it's very structured. But if this was a more organic image and I wanted to kind of feather this effect even further across the edges of the masked in areas, uh, case in point, maybe I want to feather it off of these little grid lines that are here inside of the glass. What I could do is hover over masking and that's where feather comes in and feather works the same in the luminosity mask as it does in any other masking tool. If you just pull this to the right, you'll see that it kind of blurs the edges of the mask. And I think that this would be too much for this image, but you could just definitely pull that back until it just blurs very, very slightly. It allows the image to absorb the lighting effect. And this is more natural to our eye because light, it is not very stark. It is very uh, tailored or tapered, I should say. So if I hit the letter O, we'll take a look at this effect off and on. And you can see how it's just opening up a little bit of the brightness. Now, I could have denoised the image to make it a little bit more clear, but this is a luminosity tutorial, not so much about removing noise. All right, so now it's your turn to jump into the on one and go test out the luminosity tool on your own photos. If you got questions, you run into issues, leave a comment down below. I'd love to help you. And I'm sure there's other community members here on the channel that will also enjoy helping you. Of course, if you want to learn how to use on one photo raw and get a little bit further faster, consider signing up for a coaching call with me. A link for that is in the description box below. And then lastly, just as a reminder, On One is having a sale over on their website for those of you who are not familiar because it is their 20th anniversary of being in business and creating photography software. If you want to pick up something at a discounted price, save a little bit of money in the process, consider using the affiliate link down in the description box below. I do make a commission, but that's at no extra charge to you. And it's a great way of supporting this channel and the content that I produce here. That's completely free of charge on YouTube. So until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace.